The Jackson School, along with the University of Washington, acknowledges the Coast Salish peoples of this land, the land which touches the shared waters of all tribes and bands within the Squamish, Tuyalip, and Muckleshoot nations. Hello, my name is Rashad Kasaba. I am the director of the Jackson School of International Studies. Welcome, everybody, and congratulations to the class of 2020. 208 students who are receiving their BAs, 51 who are receiving their MAs, and five who are receiving their PhDs in international studies. Among the many milestones that we mark in the course of a regular academic year, the graduation ceremony occupies a special place. Here is one last time when everybody who is graduating from the Jackson School has an opportunity to gather and celebrate together before embarking on their different paths. No wonder we call it a convocation. We are holding our convocation under some very difficult circumstances this year. The once in a century pandemic that spread across the entire globe has forced us to shift this event along with all our other classes to an online format. This is the first time in its 111 year history the Jackson School is holding its convocation virtually. I want to add, however, that we don't see this as a replacement for our in-person celebration. This is an opportunity for us to recognize your accomplishments, congratulate you, and thank all the parents partners, children, grandchildren, and friends whose sport has been essential in bringing this class of 2020 to this important point. And all the proud members of the class of 2020 are invited to attend next year's convocation, where they will be welcome to join the class of 2021 and take part in the largest convocation in the Jackson School history. As I'm recording this address, massive demonstrations are taking place across the United States to protest the murder of George Floyd, Breonna T Taylor, and Ahmaud Arbery, who are only the latest victims of racist violence that has long and painful history in this country. Even before the protests started, the COVID had already laid bare some of the most intractable problems we have been living with in the United States for a long time. In the last three months, we have been confronted with the consequences of unequal access to healthcare, vast inequalities in the distribution of income and opportunities, institutional racism, and xenophobic nationalism. We are sad, we are angry, and we are apprehensive. How can we be otherwise under these circumstances. Times like the one we are living through can be disturbing and outright frightening, especially when you are also getting ready to start a new chapter for which you have many plans, hopes, and expectations. Unsettling as they may be, such periods also offer opportunities for addressing our problems in new ways that are not burdened by the dead weight of old and failed practices. And this is precisely what I hope you will do. We know the post-COVID world will be very different from the one we had come to take for granted. But ultimately, what direction humanity will take and what the world will look like after we leave this period behind us will depend on what we, and especially what you, will do today. I can think of at least three ways in which your degree from the Jackson School has prepared you to make the right choices in these difficult times. First, we in the Jackson School believe that being globally engaged starts with the work we do here at home as part of our own communities. You don't have to wait for that internship or that job at the State Department or some other government agency, international company or nonprofit to have an impact on the world. There are many ways you can start here and now. Second, we value the importance of historical knowledge for understanding our contemporary reality. From many painful episodes in history, we know that when international organizations fail 
and opportunities for international interaction and collaboration diminish, we become poorer and less capable of addressing our problems and more prone to conflict and war. Third, we in the Jackson School work hard to erase real and imagined boundaries that separate us from each other. From COVID to climate change to cybersecurity and human rights, all the major issues of our world call for an approach that is collaborative across the nations and combines social sciences with humanities and professional expertise. These are some of the most important tools we have tried to give you in the Jackson School. Take them, use them, and go out and make a difference in the world. I know you can. Each year we recognize one of our alums for their successful career and especially for their exceptional contributions to our society. This year we are recognizing Todd Larson. Todd received a joint JD and Master's in International Studies from the University of Washington. He worked at the United Nations for 20 years, serving in a variety of legal and administrative capacities in many different parts of the world, including UN headquarters in New York City and in Geneva. At the United Nations, Todd was recognized for his path-breaking efforts for promoting LGBT equality in the United Nations and at the USAID. Todd was appointed as senior LGBTQI coordinator at the White House in the Obama administration. He was a senior presidential appointee and his mandate was to work with the White House, the State Department, and also with USAID to help define and give substance to what was then an emerging US foreign policy prior to supporting the human rights for LGBTQI persons around the world. I am pleased to introduce Todd Larson the Jackson School Distinguished Alum 2020. So you folks really lucked out. I mean, I had like a, a 40 minute graduation speech plan. It would have put you and your families into a deep, deep sleep. Now I've been instructed to limit my comments to 10 minutes from this virtual podium. Probably not a bad thing. It forces me to focus on the important stuff. As I see it, that important stuff falls into four main categories. Congrats, doors that are now open to you, the duty you have created for yourselves, whether you know it or not, and of course, gratuitous, unsolicited advice. Congrats. First and foremost, I offer you all my most warm and sincere congratulations. You did it. You all made big sacrifices to get where you are, familial, financial commitment of time and energy you could have spent on other pleasurable pursuits, but you stuck with it. You persevered, you made it. Please take a few seconds, at least, to reflect on the enormity of that and celebrate it. There were times, no doubt, when you wondered whether you would make it, but here you are. You did make it. Chapeau bas. I tip my non-existent hat to you. Now, I don't know you individually, but collectively, along with your families and friends who do know you, I'm very, very proud of you. In a word, kudos. This is a truly important life milestone for you. Bask in it, own it. This is your moment. Give yourselves a collective pat on the back. And at the same time, give due recognition and thanks to those family, friends, and esteemed educators at the Jackson School and earlier in your life who supported you throughout this journey, without whom you would not have made it to this point. Let's be honest. They join in your celebration and are deserving of their own thanks and their own congratulations. Doors that this degree opens for you. By achieving this degree from the fine institutions that are the Jackson School and the University of Washington, you've opened an endless array of doors up to you now to choose carefully through which of those doors you will pass over coming years. Without this degree, many of those options would have remained out of reach and many of those doors would have remained closed. 
You know, in the time of my grandfather, if one wanted to not have one's life choices limited, it was important to make it through at least grade school, which he did. In the time of my parents, at least high school, which they both did and eventually beyond. In the year 2020, you needed to get the degree that you got to keep your doors open. Bravo. Well done. And you chose well. You didn't go to just any school. You went to the Jackson School, recognized both nationally and internationally as a leader in advancing the understanding of and engagement in world issues. Founded in 1909, the Jackson School is one of the oldest and largest schools in the country to offer both undergraduate and graduate degrees in international and area studies. The Jackson School is widely recognized as dedicated to teaching and research which impact nations, communities, educators, and individuals, individuals like yourselves. I also chose the Jackson School many years earlier, and it opened the professional doors for me that I wanted and needed it to. It led directly to the career that I had hoped for. With a bit of further perseverance on your parts, the Jackson School will deliver the same for you duty that this degree creates for you. With the immense, endless really, opportunity afforded you by the success of your hard work and the fine reputation of your now alma mater, the Jackson School, you have a seriously weighty additional duty. Weighty for you personally and those you hold dear. Weighty also for humankind and this unparalleled time that we're living through. You need to reflect and very carefully chart the path that leads from your chosen door. A path that you will find intellectually challenging and will lead to professional satisfaction. A path that will help pay the rent or the mortgage, put groceries on the table, and support the next generation of your family to achieve their own high quality education. A path that will help clean up some of the messes my generation has either created or failed to clean up or both. And I'm sorry about that. And a path that will leave this world a better place for your having passed through it. Other than family and friends, really, what is more important than that? Leaving the world a better place for your having passed through it. Think seriously about that. To quote the inimitable prince, may he rest in peace, dearly beloved, we have gathered here today to get through this thing called life. Yes, but please, please, please don't just passively get through life. You've earned the degree and acquired the intellectual skills to wield it. Wield your life to have a positive impact. Any less, and you're being irresponsible, quite frankly, any less, and you are failing to fully capitalize on your world-class education. Allow me to channel your parents. You want to maximize the returns on your investments. Further gratuitous, unsolicited advice. Hone your linguistic skills. Education doesn't stop here. English is not the only language on the planet. Especially if you don't have the good fortune of having been raised in a dual language home, make sure that well before you are of my advanced age, you speak at least one additional language fluently, if not several, and perfect and maintain those language skills as you get older. Nothing else will be more important to success in your chosen international career, now that you have the skills and credibility given by the Jackson School. Little did I know in advance the professional credibility and access that my language skills would provide me in spades. Always live your conviction. No one else is gonna live it for you. If you hold a sincere conviction in the most unencumbered sense of that construct, you are probably right rather than wrong. And you will probably stand on the right side of history 
those with whom you have divergent opinion, and if you're doing things right, investing your professional energies to create change for the better, you will encounter folks protective of the status quo with whom you disagree. In many instances, they will be motivated by something other than sincere conviction. You hold out, leaning on the constancy of your conviction, whilst they eventually lose focus and get distracted by some shiny new issue of preoccupation. Result, you win. And in life, you wanna win. Always keep this in mind as well as you strive to live in accordance with your conviction. Good will eventually triumph over evil. Always does in the end. Continue or start on your journey of conviction now. Not tomorrow, today. Conviction early in life is the most unfettered. Invest in the long haul. Don't overemphasize it, but show a bit of humility, acknowledging that neither you alone nor even your generation will craft complete and utter victory in pursuit of your convictions. You work on the shoulders of those who came before and you are gaining ground for those who will follow. Professor, Chair, and Director Kassava, I, I can't let you all go without giving a shout out to your inimitable professor and Stanley Golub Chair and Director of the Jackson School of International Studies, Dr. Rajat Kassaba. I was a student of Dr. Kassaba's during one of his first years at the Jackson School. And as I recall, with some degree of embarrassment, I tested virtually everything he said. I've always been inherently suspicious of authority, but he put up with me and through the years we've remained good friends. He's been great to the Jackson School, helped put it on a more solid footing and give it a brighter future than ever before. So many thanks and enormous congrats, my friend Rajat. I am very much looking forward to learning of the future good work that you'll do and the further contributions that you'll make to the Jackson School after stepping down as director. And you, justifiably proud graduates, I am very much looking forward to learning of the future good work that you'll do and the many and diverse contributions that you'll make to this world, for which I thank you profoundly and sincerely in advance. So over and out, now please get busy and go make some positive change. I am now pleased to introduce Professor Angelina Godoy, who will recognize Emily Willard, who is receiving her PhD in International Studies. Thank you, Professor Kasaba. I'm here to congratulate Emily Willard today on her outstanding achievement in receiving her PhD degree today from the Jackson School of International Studies. Emily wrote a terrific dissertation, uh, which she recently defended with flying colors. And I want to tell you just a little bit about it, because usually in academic life, uh, when we confer the title of doctor on someone, we consider their dissertation their primary accomplishment, sort of their calling card as a newly minted scholar. Uh, Emily's dissertation was a three-part exploration of genocide, justice, and historical memory, drawing on her own original research in Guatemala and on the case of Rwanda, and bringing in significant insights from her read of the indigenous studies literature. And I think one of the things that I most admire about Emily as a scholar and an intellectual is her courageous commitment to approaching her research not merely as a matter of her professional advancement or writing a dissertation for a dissertation's sake, but rather by posing deep questions, uh, questions that guide not only her engagements, but all of our engagements as human beings committed to justice. So although she met and exceeded the requirements for the doctoral degree by far, I think the work that her dissertation leads, not only her, but those of us who had the privilege of reading it to reflect on, is not yet done. And it will never be done because it poses deep questions about what it means to be committed to human rights. I think, however, it would also be in 
adequate to sum up Emily's contributions here by only mentioning her dissertation. Uh, as many of you know, she's an outstanding teacher and has nurtured the intellectual growth of many undergraduates in our classrooms, whether in courses she designed herself or helping me um, teaching as well. And at the Center for Human Rights, she leaves a particularly lasting legacy because it's thanks to her expertise that we've been able to build a FOIA research program that has now involved generations of undergraduates at the University of Washington in doing research on human rights violations committed by the United States government and by allies of the United States government abroad. So we're very deeply grateful to Emily. We will miss her very much. And as director of the Center for Human Rights and chair of Emily's dissertation committee, I offer her my heartiest congratulations and my deepest expressions of gratitude for all that she's done here at the Jackson School. Emily Annette Willard. Next, we will recognize the students who are receiving their master's degree in international studies. Sujin Choi. Sadiqala Faizi. Jonathan Golden. Patrick Toffler. Urshad Zahir. Benjamin Richard Cantor. Faith Nyaunga Nyakundi. Xu Ying Chen. Gu Yu Jiang. Yi He Li. Justin McNulty. Jensen Welton. Ye Shu. Ishan Dabak. Kennedy McKay Simpson. Ian Lane Smith. Valerie Cortez. Allison Allen Fulton. Chase Procknow. Alyssa Machado. Hannah Stanley. Rebecca Tran. The Graduate Book Award is a prize of $500 awarded every year to the graduating master's student who has the highest cumulative GPA. This year, the award will go to Ian Smith, who is graduating with a master's degree in Japan studies with a cumulative GPA of 4.0. Donald C. and Marjorie S. Hallman Scholar Award comes with a stipend of $5,000 and is given to a junior who wishes to pursue a career in international affairs. The student uses the award to travel for a job or an internship during their senior year and gains practical experience that prepares them for their senior year and beyond. Gabriel Collins was the recipient last year when he was a junior. We are recognizing him this year at his graduation. And now Gabe will say a few words. Good morning, fellow graduates, friends, and family, and congratulations to the Jackson School Class of 2020. First, I would like to thank Jack and Betsy Hellman, the generous donors of the Hellman Award. Your scholarship helped carve the path on which I am today and will further continue to shape my future for years to come. Secondly, I would like to thank the Jackson School for its tireless efforts in creating not only an incredible program, but also a community within the University of Washington, rich in diversity of thought, well preparing its graduates for the challenges ahead. Lastly, I would like to thank my parents, friends, and peers for supporting my ambitions and challenging me to contribute to my community, both locally and internationally. The Hellman Award is an annual stipend to support the education and training of a Jackson School undergraduate with an interest in international policy and plans to embark in the career in the field. Last year, I was fortunate enough to receive this award and intern at the Institute of International Finance in Washington, DC. There, I had the opportunity to work with policy ex experts 
and economists on issues ranging from geopolitical risk in Latin America to determining the conditions necessary for foreign direct investment in Sub-Saharan Africa to debt sustainability in Pakistan. This internship proved to be catalytic in my ambitions to work in foreign policy and serve the public sector. Turning to today, not only do we face a pandemic, but also a historic economic contraction in a divided America. In these challenging times, we must unite as community members, not only of the Jackson School, but as members of the Seattle community and as global citizens. As Jackson School students, we are uniquely positioned to use what we have learned in studies for the greater good. Further, we have even written policy proposals on such issues such as climate change, nuclear proliferation, development, and peace in the Middle East, enabling us to enter the world on solid footing. Few moments in history have presented themselves such as the one we face today, furthering the need for us to tackle the systemic issues of inequality and institutional soundness with great urgency. Now, as Jackson School graduates, we must recognize that no matter in what capacity, no matter the scale or scope, we have the opportunity to make a difference. President Kenny once said, in a democracy, every citizen, regardless of his interest in politics, holds office. Every one of us is in a position of responsibility. So let us not quarrel with the past nor brood about the future. Rather, let us approach the seemingly insurmountable with humility and compassion one step at a time. My fellow graduates, I challenge you to seek and explore the opportunities to help your community, whether it be in business, government, or with NGOs, to challenge the status quo for the better and to do so relentlessly. I would like to leave you with a few words from Bobby Kennedy. Few will have the greatness to bend history itself, but each of us can work to change a small portion of events. And in the total, of all those acts will be written in the history of this generation. Thank you. I am now pleased to introduce the students who are receiving Bachelor of Arts degree in International Studies. Salem Abraha. Mihira Putri Adipura. Rahmo Muhammad Ali. Rocio Araho. Cecilia Elizabeth Atkins. Claire Elizabeth Bacon. Caroline Bainbridge. Alex Christopher Barson. Madeline Monique Bennett. Audrey Lynn Black. Kimiko Susan Boswell. Julie Buana. Chelsea Nicole Branham. Victoria Cardoso Furtado Lima. Orla Triona Casey. Tian Ran Chen. Mary E. Cho. Bertha Lydia Cho. Caitlin Jean Clark. Gabrielle Ann Coil. Audrey Marie Conrad. Claire Elizabeth Cowan. Janine Crossland. Connor Cunningham. Oliver Hart Daniels Pavich. Mariella Dewars. Ruth Y. Diaz. Alyssa Marie DeFurio. Elizabeth Cavillo Duenas. Grace Elizabeth Kotai D. Naomi Iguchi Faletti. Han Wen Fan. Devin Ray Fleming. Allison Doreen Fliss. 
Anna Judah Fotheringham, Lauren Elizabeth Frizzell, Abigail Rachel Gooch, Rachel Molly Greenwood, Bonnie E. Greer, Susanna Beth Haley, M. Elizabeth Holiday Patachek Choi, El Alizette Hammerstedt, Gavin Doty Hashimoto, Travis Michael Hayes, James David Hennessy, Aiden O'Hara Hitchcock, Alicia Maria Contreras Houston, Olympia Faith Hunt, Sydney A. Janeway, Manisha Ja, Lauren Ann Johnson, Cassie Kays Hernandez, Koi Trong Kong, Yuan T. Kwong, Andrew Lai, Xiao Ching Lai, Sarah Elizabeth Lee, Xin Ye Lu, Chong Yu Li, Diego Andreas Lingad, Hannah Grace Long, Antonio Bain Lozano, Jasper Finn Malamud, William McCoy, Quinn Allen McTie, Sabrina Mohammed Nordeen. Christine L. Munson, Ye Mayant, Amy Nguyen, Regan O'Keefe, Guy Aron, Michelle Francis Osler, Nadine Elisa Paltep. Catherine Lynn Pekarski, Kang Kang Pang, Shimena A. Perez, Richard McKibben Perry, Shannon Rafferty Pearson, Addison Olivia Rakowitz, Miranda Renee Reisman. Grace Roberts, Andrew Robles, Ireland Shear, Emma Stone Schnee, Hannah Schubert, Nicole Catherine Seligman, Anna Marie Sexton. Abigail Loring Shaw, Ke Jia Shang, Hallie Elizabeth Sherwood, Sarah Rose Schuer, Anastasia A. Sidorovich, Salma Donancy Silva Licon, Micah Marie Slaughter. Sarah M. Smiley, Van Adam Sodenberg, Su Hin Song, Tanya Mariella Stockdale, Julia Catherine Stromat, Daniela Suarez, 
Kali Kanost Suba Shu Ro Sun Austin Dante Serber Elizabeth Stacy Swanberg Yoon Moon Tai Ashley Jing Hei Tang Cameron Tarzaban Kokoro Terukina Clotilde Alexandra E. Thomas Abraham Torres Benjamin Tripp Victoria Tekur Tyron Kayla Rose Van Coten Kyle George Van Vliet Aliyah Seda Volcan Jeremy David Voss Mackenzie May Womble C. Don Wong Mason Adair Weekly Brooke Haley Williams Kiana Renee Wilson Joanna Wong Xiao Jing Wu Kenning Ching Ron Yan Clara Bailey Yardley Jian Yi Yu Wan Yun Adrian Su K Osorio Yue Zhu Huan Zhang Audrey Jin Nin Zhao Each year, we select one of our graduating seniors as the recipient of the Jackson Leadership Award. To receive this award, the student has to distinguish herself not only by maintaining an excellent academic record, but also by setting an example for her fellow students through involvement in projects that help her community and inspire her peers. The students who are considered for this award are nominated by their professors. Then, in addition to submitting an application, they are interviewed by a faculty committee. The winner is recognized at the convocation and gets a stipend of $5,000. This year's winner is Victoria Tyron. A double major in international studies and communication, Victoria impressed her professors with her deep commitment to her community, her ability to inspire her friends, and her tireless efforts to bring together her four passions, social justice, international studies, communication, and people of Ghana. Now, Victoria will make a few comments reflecting on her experience in the Jackson School. Hello everyone, my name is Victoria Tyron and I would like to begin by thanking God for his endless favor, my friends and family who have uplifted me in every way possible, the JLA committee and the Jackson School for this opportunity. When I was notified that I was this year's recipient, I was excited, followed immediately by an oh shoot, I gotta give a speech. But in thinking hard about what I wanted to use these three to five minutes to say, I was reminded of some of the questions that the committee asked during the interview, like what my approach to leadership is. My answer essentially boiled down to, I'm doing what those who came before me did and that is to approach leadership with a picture of the future. In that sense, my approach to leadership over time had taken on the form of many black leaders and organizers who came before me, including the leaders, including the very ones who fought tirelessly to bring black students and other students of color on this campus, the Office of Minority Affairs and Diversity. In their actions and words, each of those students thought about people like me who would come here 50 years later, and they organized, strategized, and mobilized to ensure that the barriers and challenges they were facing would not remain to meet me. Their leadership was telling of the future they imagined. It is why, standing before you today, I would be committing a grave injustice to not think about the students who look like me, who will be attending this institution and many others across this nation in the future. I must wonder if the challenges and systematic oppression facing black America today across all fronts will be, remain to meet them in the future, in the next 50 years. 
It is because I am thinking of them that I cannot bring myself to give another flowery commencement speech that promises a world where the sky is the limit. Because if we will all be honest with ourselves, if you, the 2020 graduating class of the Jackson School, the people of this university, and all of America will be honest with ourselves, we will see that those words, cliche as they may seem, are not true for black counterparts. And yet, you go to school with us, you work with us, and engage in several different relationships with us. Where is the sense of justice and humanity? Even if you have closed your eyes and ears to the long history and outward manifestations of anti-blackness in this country, the past few months, and especially the couple we past couple weeks, demands that you no longer do that. The truth is that no matter how hard we want to believe that the sky is truly the only thing that can stop us, myself and the rest of black America knows that this is not the case. Every day we encounter and are reminded of the institutional barriers that limit us. Like when we apply for and are denied relief funding to keep our businesses open during a global pandemic. We are reminded of the challenges and risks to our health as unaddressed racial biases and social disparities result in the dismissal of our well-being. And most importantly, we are reminded of our limits each time we see another video and hashtag about the brutal execution of our brothers and sisters and children at the hands of those meant to protect and serve. We are reminded that we are only allowed to touch the sky when our souls depart from our bodies and our pleas for breath and life fall upon deaf ears. Unfortunately, words like please don't shoot and I can't breathe are continuously being engraved upon the fabric of this nation and it seems like no one cares. Today, standing before you, I fully recognize that I am an exception to a rule, to the rule of blatant racism and oppression, pushing forth an agenda of anti-blackness and it runs through this country like blood in veins. And because we are not asked about our degrees and families and numerous accolades before police brutality and other oppressive, me oppressive measures execute us, do not look at me and the black people in these graduating caps and gowns to make your judgments and decisions about getting involved. Look to and remember people like Ms. Brianna Taylor, an award-winning EMT and ER technician with lifelong plans of doing her part in healthcare. Remember Ms. Tatiana, Jefferson, whose life was taken from her in her own home, doing something each of you have done before, playing video games and taking care of your families. Mr. Botham Jean, a graduate of Harding University and an accountant for a multinational firm, Pricewaterhouse, murdered because he was thought to be a burglar in his own home by a police officer who should have known better. Know the name Shalon Irving, who despite numerous degrees from top universities and accomplishments in research health, was failed by a healthcare system that continuously dismisses the history, health, and voices of black women. Remember the names of Clementa Pickney, Cynthia Graham, Susie Jackson, Ethel Lance, the Payne Middleton doctor, Taiwanza Sanders, Danielle Simmons, Sharonda Coleman Singleton, and Myra Thompson, also known as the Charleston Nine, violently massacred at a Bible study simply because of the color of their skin. Remember Ahmaud Arbery who was hunted down like an animal during his regular jog because he was racially profiled and sus suspected of theft. Remember Mr. George Floyd, a truck driver known as Floyd and called a gentle giant by all who knew and loved him. Murdered in broad daylight by a police officer for what was thought to be a forged $20 bill. For the black people of this country, every thought, action, and word spoken is a fight to exist. Unfortunately, there are hundreds and thousands of others, known and unknown, who have suffered like this. Every day something happens that makes me wonder if I will be next, if my sisters will be next, my father, my mother, or my friends. It breaks my heart and it should do the same to yours to imagine that many more will continue to meet this fate if silence and action continues to be the status quo. As quoted by Professor Kasaba, the world is not something out there for us to wonder about. It is us. In the same way, this country is not something out there that we ponder. It is us and the culmination of our actions that make it what it is. The education we have and the degrees we receive today will be nothing more than accessories if we don't use them as the tools of change they are meant to be. They impart a distinct opportunity and responsibility upon us to be at the forefront of the fight against the hypocrisy of this nation and making it live up to everything it has claimed and claims to be. As our next steps takes us into various career fields and institutions of this country, we must leverage the power of our education. You must leverage your privilege, white and otherwise, and other privileges granted to you by the system if justice is to be achieved. If my words and the words of many others across this country have meant anything to you, then you have to start asking yourself what needs to be done behind, besides praying hand emojis and hashtags. Ask why is it that 99% of police killings in the wrongful death of black people do not receive sentences. Ask if any of your friends, families, and community members face the fa same fears of doing everyday things like jogging, playing in the park, going to church, and working to earn a living like black people do. And as you ask these questions, look around you. 
When looking, cast your eyes down from the billowing smoke of the fires to see the blood and bodies of black mothers, fathers, and children on the ground. Listen beyond the sounds of crashing glass on the pavement to hear the cries of black America pleading that we not be forced to bury our futures with the next body. Do not let your discomfort and fear restrict you. Look beyond the point of comfort where your gaze is always stopped and begin to look at your families, communities, and societies. Identify and acknowledge where you have done your part, but also where you have failed. Analyze the voices you allow yourself to hear and the ones you've dismissed. When we organize, strategize, and mobilize, educate yourself on how to be the best ally possible. Do not allow anyone to tell you that this is just a fight between black and white, us versus them. No, it doesn't have to be. For the only us in this is those against racism and injustice, and the only them are those who fail to see their detriments. Once again, I truly want to congratulate you because all of you have, without a doubt, accomplished something incredible. But please do not your, let your education and leadership stop on this campus. Do not let your sense of what is right and what ought to be stop at the Jackson School. We are students of international studies spanning across all focuses and concentrations, but it is not only our travels to other parts of the world that will bring about change. There is a call for change in this very country. So please use your skills from the communication track, your skills in human rights, your knowledge in global and economic development, and in all the regional studies, putting them into action, like voting when the time comes. Be of use. As we enter new spaces and pave new paths, may we not wait for titles and higher positions in the chain before doing our part. I ask that in this next chapter of our lives, our acts of leadership will outweigh our words about it, and most importantly, that our leadership, our acts of leadership, will be telling of the future we imagine. Thank you. The Undergraduate Book Award is a prize of $500 awarded to the student who is graduating with the highest cumulative GPA. This year's award goes, goes to Xiao Ching Lai, who completed her double major in International Studies and Psychology with a cumulative GPA of 3.94. In most years, we select one of the theses that are written for the Jackson School Honors Program and designated for high honors. This year's recipient of high honors is Kiana Wilson. This year, we also have two honorable mentions. They are Devin Fleming and Guy Oran. President of the Jackson School Student Association, Gianni Wang, will present this year's winner of Student Service Award. First of all, I would like to congratulate everyone for completing this big step in your life. The Jackson School Student Association is honored to present the recipient for the Student Service Award this year at the convocation. The Jackson School cannot serve its students without the dedication from its faculty and the staff member. Thus, each year, the JASA collects nomination from Jason's student for recognize a student, a staff or faculty member who has made a significant contribution to the Jackson School community. This is a way for us as JC student to express our appreciation for all the effort that they made to the community. With that being said, I'm honored to be presenting the recipient of Student Service Award this year, Johnny Mars. She has gone beyond what is asked for her as a Jackson School advisor. She's always available to help Jackson School students and ha have a huge smile on her face whenever she does. She always have a cheerful disposition and she works hard every day to help students, not only with her academic needs, but with her personal or future goals as well. Johnny deserves this recognition for all of her hard work and de dedication to helping make this Jackson School the best experience that it could be. A quote from this year's nomination, Johnny is an awesome advisor who not only helps me plan out my courses, but inspire me to take challenging classes and discover new programs in the Jackson School. She has been incredibly helpful through the transition to online classes, despite the challenge posed by COVID-19. Thank you so much, Johnny, and I can always see you again in Seattle.
Several of our students were also recognized with university and nationwide awards this year. I would like to mention four of them here. Connor Cunningham won a Fulbright Fellowship. Yogasai Gazula won a Critical Language Scholarship. And two of our students are included among Husky 100. These are 100 graduating seniors selected by the University of Washington administration from among thousands of students. They are recognized for having made the most of their college experience. The two Jackson School students who are included in this list are Victoria Tyron and Roshni Sinha. This is the end of our program. Unforgettable as it was, 2019-2020 was also the last year of my tenure as director of the Jackson School. Leading this institution for the past 10 years has been a privilege, certainly the high point of my professional life. As I say goodbye, I want to thank everybody who worked so hard to make the Jackson School the special place that it is. These include the faculty, staff, and above all, all of our extraordinary students. I would have liked to shake everybody's hand and congratulate you and thank you in person. Alas, we are unable to do that. As it is becoming more obvious every day, our world needs people like you. People who are globally oriented, well-trained, compassionate, and socially engaged. I know you will succeed in ways that we don't even know how to imagine today. Congratulations and good luck. Also, don't forget, this is your community for life. Please keep in touch. Remember that the class of 2020 receives a free one-year University of Washington Alumni Association membership. Thank you. Hello. <laughs>